great. Go ahead. You're good. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks for having me, Alyssa. Um, Alyssa has been a friend of mine for a couple years. Absolutely love her energy, have so much respect for her, have a ton of girls um, in her downline that work with me via the Push Elite group, um, many of my other groups. So super, super thankful for you. Um, thanks for having me, everybody. Thanks for being here on a Wednesday night, for giving up your time and energy. If you are, if it's possible, if it's at all possible, I would love it if you would turn your video on so that we can see your face because collective energy does something, okay? Collective energy has a way of making everything more tangible. The reason we're bummed that we can't go to Summit is why? Because getting together in person creates this collective energy between all of us. So if you're doing something, you can't turn your video on, like driving, that's totally fine. But if you can, turn it on. We want to see you, okay? So we can all see each other's faces. The more energy I get from you, the more energy I can give to you, okay? So tonight, I want to teach you um, what is my very favorite thing to teach on. I call it the success formula, okay? This is actually something that I got um, from... Really, Micah Folsom told me about it first from a Dave Ramsey book called Entree Leadership. And then I just put my own little spin on it to complete the equation. But I want you to write this down and then we're going to go through this equation and help you see how you can have success in any area of your life, in any area of your business, in any season of your business. I'm going to help you see how this applies to you, whether you signed up yesterday, whether you're going for Diamond whether you're going for elite or whether you're going for 27,000 star, regardless of where you're at in your business, this will apply. So I want you to write this down. The formula is this consistency plus intensity plus worth plus time. Shannon, I think you're unmuted. I love you to death, but I can hear the birds chirping. Consistency plus intensity plus worth plus time. We're going to go through how each of these, when you put them together, this equals whatever you want. Um, technically, do, Alyssa, do you want to hit mute all and then just unmute me? And that way as people hop on, they'll just be. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. So consistency plus intensity plus worth plus time. Um, Dave Ramsey said that this equals momentum, but I say it equals anything you want. Anything regardless of where you're at in your business. Now, I've heard this said, and I, used, and, I, and I used to preach this. I used to preach this back my first couple of years before I understood the full picture. When people weren't getting the kind of results that I felt like they should be getting, I said this. Tell me if you've heard this before. You need to do more. You need to do more. You need to do more personal development. You need to do more invites. You need to do more. 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 And sometimes that's true if you're not doing the things you're supposed to do. And we're going to talk about that tonight, I promise, okay? You can't do nothing and get results, okay? But at the same time, we've learned this from our health and fitness journey that you also have, everyone kind of has this sweet spot. And if you're already working out 30 to 45 minutes a day, but not getting the results that you want, you don't need to go to the gym for four hours a day to try to get better results. That's not healthy either. There's kind of like this, I don't like to use the word balance. It's one of my least favorite words in the world, but there's kind of this harmony to all of these things going together and adding up together. It doesn't always mean you need to do more. Sometimes the problem is the intensity or the worth or the time. So we're going to talk about consistency first. Because without consistency, none of the other stuff matters. So we at least have to set the foundation with the word consistency. But here's where I want you to really get a hold of this word. Next to the word consistency, I want you to write this phrase down. Must do the right things. Must do the right things. Consistency is not about how many days you show up. It's not. There are people that have been signed up for the gym for six years, and that does not give them permission to lose weight. I get this from beach body coaches all the time. When people are applying for my push elite group, or when I get on like a hot seat call with somebody, every single time people start off with, well, I signed up 72 years ago. Like, like it's something to brag about that they've been signed up for a long time, okay? 
I'm going to try to keep this PG-13 because I, I, I don't know how far I'm able to go. I wrote a book called F Leadership. So I'm trying to watch my mouth tonight a little bit. But, but I don't care how long you've been signed up. If anything, how long you've been signed up maybe should count against you, not for you. Because I have girls tell me, well, I've been signed up for five years and I've never missed success club. Like, I, don't, I, I really don't care how many times you made three sales in one month. If you've been signed up for four years, you should no longer be celebrating that you made three sales this month. Unless you're selling Cadillac Escalades or houses, nobody in the world makes money because they made three sales. Like, I want you to imagine, like, somebody who is in sales bragging about the fact that they've made three sales. I sold three pairs of jeans this month. I am just on fire. Nobody else in any other industry thinks that that is something to brag about. So here's the thing that I need to tell you. How long you've been signed up doesn't mean anything. How many days in a row you've posted on Facebook and Instagram doesn't mean anything. How many days in a row you recorded hip hop dance videos for your stories doesn't mean anything. The only thing I care about is how many days in a row, how many weeks in a row, and how many months in a row have you actually done all of your vital behaviors at least five to six days a week. I have been on over, I've done the math a couple times recently, I've been on over 250 team calls. That's a lot of team calls. <laughs> That's a lot. And most teams, with the exception of maybe a Micah Folsom, who I worked with for three years, most teams I've spoke for once, maybe twice. So we're talking around 200 different teams that I have spoke for, okay? This is how I calculate what I call Josh statistics. Okay, they're not anything actually official or scientifically proven. It's more like I've talked to enough humans to like get a pretty good idea of what this is. And let me just tell you something based on Josh statistics. People that get on team calls should be the most committed. They should be the people that are doing the most. Like if we we're just going to like measure on who's like the real people that are like all in and who aren't, the ones on the team call should be the ones who are all in, correct? Would you guys agree? And based on Josh statistics, the people who get on the calls, the ones that are the most committed, the ones that are the most all in people, 90% of you do not do invites at least five days a week. where I stop with this smile that's like I said something really hard to process please don't hate my guts I'm trying to be a nice guy but I'm really not 90% of you who are willing to give up an hour of your time on a Wednesday night 90% of you that probably are on TikTok Instagram Facebook YouTube and God knows where else making hip hop videos, every, don't even send invites five days out of the week. Now, again, I want you to imagine being in any other sales industry where you don't actually have a conversation about your product on a daily basis, but you expect to have success. Like that's just not possible. The name of the game, and I know that Beachbody hates the word sales, I'm going to be real. You have to like get over that. This is sales. Okay. You might not like the word sales because you don't want to look like the guy at the car dealership. And that's fine. I don't want you to look like that guy either. That guy is an ass. Okay. I don't want you to look like that. But this is sales. Now, to me, sales is a beautiful word. And let me tell you why. When I first started and doing consultations and was trying to line up clients, I talked to my coach about this and I was like, I'm struggling to close the deal. And here's why. Because I give people one free call. I think I probably gave Alyssa one free call before we work together. I always give people one free call and just say, I just want to see if I can add value to your life. And we get to the end of the call 
And I feel super weird about the fact that I just spent an hour adding value into this person's life. And now I'm going to transition into the guy who asks for money. Just feel super weird. And he said, Josh, let me ask you this. If you had someone drowning in the water next to you and you were holding a life raft, would you ask them if they wanted to take 48 hours to think about it and pray about it and talk to their spouse about it? Or would you just throw them the life raft? I was like, wow, I never thought about it that way. See, we actually have something to offer people that literally saves their life. How many of you can say, Beachbody saved my life? Show me some jazzies. I ask for jazzies because you're all muted, so I can't get feedback. So we got to show jazzies, okay? Show me some jazzies of Beachbody literally saved your life. And here's what I found. We got a whole bunch of people who have literally had their lives saved who are surrounded by a world of people that are still stuck in your before picture. And they're gonna stay stuck there forever if you don't take the time to reach out and offer them the life raft. You're holding the cure, holding it. But because you're so afraid of sounding salesy, sounding spammy or scammy, or maybe you're afraid that you're gonna get featured on anti-MLM. You don't have enough followers to get featured on anti-MLM, okay? You're fine. I'm on there, Alyssa's on there. You're not gonna show up. You're, you're gonna be all right. You're gonna fly under the radar just fine, okay? But here's the thing, you have a solution and you're just sitting on it, just sitting on it. If you want to go somewhere in this business, and I'm gonna say even if you wanna go somewhere in life, you're gonna to have to get really okay with how uncomfortable it feels to ask people to give you money because that's the only way you can help them change their life is they, if they invest in themselves to get the products and to get the process that will change their life. For me personally, I see not selling someone as a failure on my part as a leader because tonight's call is going to be awesome. I hope. I mean, you might already hate my guts. That's okay too. Tonight's call is going to pump you full of energy and motivation. If you are on the East Coast, definitely you are not sleeping tonight because I'm going to pump you full of so much freaking adrenaline. But if I don't get you to commit to some type of process, I failed. Now, all of your Instagram posts, all of your stories, all of your videos were yes to inspire people, but also to show people that if they made the same commitment you have made, their life could change forever. So consistency does not equal wearing the ball cap, wearing the t-shirt, or getting the bobblehead, even though that's fun stuff. Consistency equals doing the right things, AKA the vital behaviors, over and over and over and over. And if that's not the foundation, we don't stand a chance. And here's what I found. People will go, and, and, and I'm in the Boss Babes Mastermind. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. I've spoken in it several times. My buddy Bailey um, runs that. And people are sharing graphics, people are sharing tips, tricks, blah, blah, blah. Here's what I found. Beachbody coaches will spend all day and night looking for the one hack that they think the top coaches have that got them to success. Meanwhile, all of the top coaches, Alyssa confirmed this for you, all of the top coaches, all of the leaders, we're all saying there isn't a hack. Like my consistency over time was the hack. And as health and fitness coaches, you should know better. How many times have you told your followers to stop falling for get skinny, fast gimmicks? How many times have you told your followers it's not about some crazy radical trick that no one's ever heard of. It's about just doing the things that make sense, eating healthy food, exercising over time. So Beachbody is so anti get rich quick in its very belief system about how health and fitness works. But if we're not careful, 
we fall for those same stupid gimmicks and tricks in our business. And we think, well, if I just, if I just signed up for this one training on how to get my next 10,000 followers, they're going to tell you the same thing you've heard a thousand times before. I can promise you that. There isn't a get rich quick formula to network marketing or any other business out there. You got to do the right work the same way the rest of us did. That's number one. Okay. Number two, intensity. I want you to write next to intensity, the right energy. So number one is the right actions. Number two is the right energy. So sometimes we do have girls that come in and this is where the work more, do more doesn't necessarily make sense. We have girls that are doing all of the right work. They're sending out the invites. They're doing the posts. They're on their A game, on their transformation journey. And then they still can't figure out why is it not working as fast for me as it is for other people. And that's where I got to talk to you about the intensity factor. So your energy has so much to do with what your actions are actually capable of creating and performing for you. Without the right energy, all you're doing is checking off boxes. Now, I want you to pretend for a second that I get on this call and I'm the guest speaker and I have all of the same things to say to you. I give you the success formula of consistency plus intensity. Okay, everybody's already bored, okay? I literally did it for 15 seconds and everybody's already bored. That's the difference. I wanted to show you the difference between the action, which is just speaking the words. And I, I could literally sit here and read my book to you. And it could be all of the magical stuff that I said in the book, but without the right energy, it doesn't matter. It doesn't grab your attention and it doesn't have the ability to actually change you. Napoleon Hill, who wrote the greatest personal development book that has ever been written called Think and Grow Rich, every personal growth book that has ever been written is just a new expression of something he already said in like 1934, okay? Guy was a freaking prophet, like legit a prophet. Like the same type of thing you say about people in the Bible being a prophet, homeboy was literally the prophet of personal growth, okay? And he says that when you are doing affirmations, he didn't even have that word yet. I don't think he called, what did he call it? I forget what he called it, but it was not affirmations. When you are doing affirmations, if you don't connect it to emotions, it has no ability to penetrate into your subconscious mind and change the way you think and see yourself. The only way it's effective is if you mix emotions with it. Now, I'm going to show you how this is true in every part of life, not just business. I want you to imagine Two girls go to Turbo Kick. I don't know how many of you even know what Turbo Kick is. Two, two of you go to Turbo Kick class, okay? And one of you goes to the very front and you take like your scoop of Energize and you show up early and you're ready to go and you do everything the instructor says to do. When she says jump, you say how high. And day after day after day, you show up and you bring your A game. Another girl shows up. She's five minutes late every single day. She's in the very back corner because she's a little unconscious about, not unconscious, she's a little subconscious, sorry, insecure about the, not, she's not unconscious, that'd be super weird, okay? <laughs> she's subconscious about what she looks like when she works out. So she hides in the back corner. She's a little afraid to challenge herself because she doesn't want to look stupid and fall or fail. And so she does all of the modifiers, even though in reality she could have done the real moves, she just didn't want to look silly. And she constantly, instead of bringing her A game, brings more like her C minus game. Now you tell me, after 90 days, which girl gets better results? The girl on the front row taking her energize and going after every single move, or the girl hiding in the back corner because she's worried about what she looks like? Who gets better results? I think we all agree the girl on the front row gets the better results, right? Your business is the same way. Some of you are on the front row and you were like, oh my gosh, give me all the goods. Give me all the goods. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And when Alyssa says do invites, you say, yo, I got you, girl. When Alyssa says we're having a retreat, all you got to do is get the diamond. You're like, I'll make it happen. When Alyssa says meet me at Summit and also I need you to crush these goals so that we can also have a get together and celebrate. You're like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. 
And then some of you are hiding in the back corner and Alyssa says, do invites. And you're like, well, that might make me look stupid. Alyssa says, meet me at Summit. And you're like, yeah, but I don't really fit in. Alyssa says, I want you to hit diamond so that you can come hang with us at this special dinner. And you say, mm, I don't know if I'm good enough. Which girl gets better results? The girl that leans in and just says, I'm here for it. And maybe I will fall on my face. Shit, I probably will fall on my face because that's what happens when we try new things. But I don't care. I'm here for it. I'm ready to make some things happen. A lot of you know who Megan Geese is. Megan Geese started working with me three and a half years ago when Alyssa first signed on with me and advertised one of my webinars to her team. Megan Geese got on. And Megan Geese decided I'm done living subpar life. She signed up for my training. She is now stuck with me for like three and a half years in my trainings and is now, I mean, if you know who she is, just kicking ass and taking all the names. She's a freaking rock star. Because at some point, she decided I'm done being the girl in the back corner. I'm going to come up to the front. I'm going to do what I'm told, and I'm going to go after it. And yeah, for the first year, it was a little messy. For the first year, it was a little sloppy. For the first year, lots of insecurity just all over the place. But the only way to get over your insecurities is to let them out and just face them. The longer you hide, the longer you will stay stuck in the demons of yesterday. And I always tell my clients that you will either face the demons that you have or you will by default pass them off to your children. I'm gonna tell you why I'm so intense about everything I do because when I started this business, I had been detailing cars for nine and a half years, playing in rock bands on the weekends. And I was sick and tired of telling my kids that daddy couldn't afford a birthday party. Let's go a step further. They bring home invitations for birthday parties that they were invited to. And instead of hanging them up and marking them on my calendar and saying, okay, yes, I can't wait. You know what I did? I left them on the table knowing that with three kids, it would eventually get lost somewhere and they'd forget to bring it up until after it was over. And I could avoid taking them to a party because I didn't have the money to buy their friend a present. And at the age of 30, I looked myself in the mirror and said, you made this mess. Now you got to go clean it up. You got us here. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do to fix that? Are you going to sit and whine about it? You can sit around and complain about it. You're going to keep asking your mom for money or you're going to be a grown ass adult and get out there and do something about it. So I signed up for the John Maxwell team, even though it scared the crap out of me, took an entire tax return just for my down payment. I got kicked out of the John Maxwell training three different times because I couldn't afford my monthly payment. I got to the point where I actually stopped re-requesting to join the Facebook group because I was embarrassed about how many different times I had been reintroduced to the group. But when J Max said jump, I said, how high? When J Max said, I want you to start practicing coaching people, even while you're not officially certified, I said, yes, sir. When J Max said cold message people and ask them if they want to have a free session with you, I said, yes, sir. When J Max said put on live events, I said, yes, sir. When he said read this book, I said, yes, sir. I did anything and everything he told me. You want to hear something crazy? In my whole first year being mentored, by John Maxwell, the greatest leader who has lived in our current era, I made $500 total for my whole first year. I felt like the biggest failure in the world. I felt like there was no hope for me. I felt like John Maxwell probably wanted to give me what we used to call in the church, the, the right foot fellowship. <laughs> Kick me out. You know, it was a pretty, pretty horrible joke, but that was, those are church jokes for you, okay? I felt like I suck. But I was so committed to my kids and giving them the best life possible. I said, I don't care how many times I have to fail. I'm not passing these demons to my kids. I don't want my kids calling me when they're 30 saying, hey, dad, 
kind of borrow a few hundred dollars. Well, what's worse is if things would have kept going the same way, I wouldn't have even been able to loan them the $200 because I wouldn't have had it. I said, I don't care how hard I have to fight and I don't care how long I have to fight. I will figure this out. And then I made a promise to God. I said, if you'll help me figure this out, I promise you, I'll spend the rest of my life teaching other people how to figure it out. And that's why when I show up, I bring everything I've got every single time because this business saved my life. It saved my children. It saved my future. And I believe it can do the same for you. And when you fall in love with your products, you better get on the freaking rooftops and shout it because if you don't, I, I, just, I just hope that you make the same kind of commitment to God that I made to God. That when you figure something out, you'll spend the rest of your life helping other people figure it out so that you don't be the one that the change stops with. And when you catch that, you can't be quiet. You can't be chill. You can't be like, I'm sorry, I'm not like a super Zen person. Um, I take some time to practice being a little Zen because I need it sometimes. But I'm not a calm person because I got things that need to be done. And I got people that need me. And I'm going to tell you right now, nobody cares that you got 75 superfoods in your shake. Nobody cares. Nobody cares that it tastes like an Oreo shake. Nobody cares. The only thing people care about is how lit are your eyeballs? How much has it transformed your life from the inside? Because that's what people are looking for. It could taste like actual literal shit. If it changed someone's life, people would drink it. I've always joked for years that Shaleen Johnson could go on and sell actual bags of shit and people would pay for it because people are sold on Shaleen Johnson. And that's the thing. When people are sold on you, they'll buy from you whatever it is. It's not, it's not about the product, even though I believe that you should love the product. It's about you. Have you used the product to fall in love with you? You first. And then are you willing to use it to help other people love them? But when you catch that intensity, if you go follow Megan Geese over on social media, you will see the light glowing from her eyeballs. You follow any top coach, you will see the light glowing from their eyeballs. And sometimes you're like, I don't get it. They just like post this thing and I like copy and paste the same thing. and I don't get the same results. Yeah, because you ain't got no eyeballs glowing from your, you ain't got it. You ain't got the glow. You got to have the glow. That's why I have, I don't know if you noticed, but I have, a, I have a light bulb tattooed on my bicep for that exact reason. It's the glow effect. The glow effect changes everything you do. Okay, let's move on to number three. So consistency is the right, the right action. Intensity is the right energy. And then three is worth. Worth is the right belief. Now, I'm going to tell you two of my favorite universal principles that work hand in hand. Number one, what you sow is what you reap. We like to use this one, but sometimes we use it out of context because we forget that what you seek is what you will find. And these two principles work together. They cannot be separated. Now, when you just sow to reap without the seeking to find, what you end up with is a workaholic, which can also be very unhealthy. This is the person that thinks they have to work 14 hours a day in order to have success. This is the person that thinks they need to 10x all of their invites in order to have any type of success. That's not very healthy, okay? But then you have the other side of it where people think that they can seek and find without doing any of the work. This is what I would call the manifestation movement. And when it's not mixed with work, it's just bullshit. I mean, it just is. I mean, you can sit around and think about happier things all day and night. If you don't actually go do any work, you're just going to be a really happy, poor person. Now, you have to choose between being a happy, poor person and a sad, poor person. Happy, poor person is probably better, okay? But for me personally, 
I want those things to actually change something out here. And the only way I have permission in this planet to change something is if I sow a seed, which equals some version of physical labor using the talents and gifts that God's given me. Okay. So here's the thing. The consistency solves the problem of what you sow is what you reap and make sure you're doing the work. Okay. But I also want to help you understand that you can do all of the work in the world. But if you don't understand this other principle of what you seek is what you find, you will find yourself working yourself to death for nothing. Now, let me give you an example. We probably all had a friend like this. Maybe some of you have been this person. The person that goes to a social event. And before the event ever happens, they tell you, I don't even know why I'm going. It's going to be stupid. Nobody's going to talk to me. It's not going to be any fun. Nobody there cares about me. Blah, 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 blah. Go on all day and night. The day of the event, sometimes you even find yourself sick thinking about going to the event and the anxiety of how no one there is going to talk to you or like you. Finally, at the last minute, you talk yourself into going. You get to the event. And what do you do? You head to the back corner. You sit in a chair and you turn away from everybody. And while everyone comes in, you look over your shoulder and you kind of smile at them a little bit and then you look right back. And in your head, you were trying so hard to make friends that night. You in your head were smiling and making eye contact with everyone and being so friendly. But the reality of it is you had convinced yourself before you ever showed up that nobody liked you, nobody wanted to be your friend, no one was going to talk to you, and it was going to be a disaster. And while you thought you were making eye contact with everyone, being friendly and open and welcome, in reality, you were sitting in the back corner, completely turned away from everyone and making creepy eyes at everyone as they walked in that made people think, homegirl wants to be left alone. My God, I'm not going to talk to her. In other words, you manifested your own reality. You manifested the thing that you had preconceived in your head, you turned it into the worst night of your life before you ever showed up. Now in your head, you think that you tried to make friends. You think that you were making eye contact with people, but you ran out halfway into the night saying, I knew it. I knew everyone hated my guts. I knew no one liked me. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Now, again, I don't say this to embarrass or shame anyone. If that was you, we've all been through our own shit. Okay. But I know someone who was like this, and I watched it over and over and over and over. And watching from the outside was exhausting because I wanted to be like, yo, if you would just walk up and actually smile and say hi and try to carry on a conversation instead of hiding in the back corner, maybe someone would be your friend. Because I talked to all of them, and none of them were as mean as you thought they were. You wanted to think that they were mean because you didn't really want to be there. And so you needed to convince yourself that the whole thing sucked so that you could have a good excuse to go home and whine about it. Now, sometimes we do this with our business. We're starting conversations. We're sending invites. But in our head, we've already convinced ourselves that we're not as pretty as the top coaches. We don't have as big of a following as the top coaches. We don't have experience. We don't know how to talk to people. We don't know what we're doing. Even if they did join our team, we'd probably let them down because we're a bad leader. And we're doing all of the work, but in our head, we've already convinced ourselves that we suck and no one wants to work with us and no one wants to be on our team. And therefore, we sabotage everything before it ever even begins. This is something I learned from life coaching school. I want you to write this down. This is so good. So good. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will rule your life and you will call it fate. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will rule your life and you will call it fate. I do a workshop when I uh, go speak at team retreats. And the workshop is based around you taking the pen and making the decision to write your own fate and write your own story. 
and we go through limiting beliefs and we go through fears and insecurities to try to help you understand that your entire life, your past, your failures, your insecurities, all of these things have tried to hold the pen and write your story for you. And the only thing it really takes to get what you want in life is to say, screw you, I'm taking the pen. And I'm going to write the story that I want. Today, I'm a badass. Today, I'm a champion. Today, I'm a rock star. Yes, I am an elite coach. Yes, I am a top 10 if that's what you want to be. Yes, I am a six-figure earner if that's what you want to be. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And as long as you hold on to the pen, the beauty of life is that we have the most precious gift in the world called free will. You can get anything you want. Anything. Now, I'm not guaranteeing it'll happen this year, okay? But you can get anything you want if you just keep writing it down because you are essentially claiming your own future and writing your own destiny. And because of the gift of free will, there is no power on the planet that can take that from you. I personally believe in a God. You can believe whatever you want. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't matter. I think, I think most of us believe in some version of a higher power, whether you call it God or the universe or whatever you call it. But even God or the universe, creation does not nullify or go against free will. Can't do it. Because let's be real. If free will didn't exist, why the hell are any of us on this call tonight? If you don't have free will to change your life, why don't we all eat Ben and Jerry's right before bed every single night, call it good? <laughs> and this is how I prove that free will exists. I dare you to eat three pints of Ben and Jerry's before bed every single night, pray over it, that God would keep you in his perfect divine will of being healthy and see what happens when you wake up in the morning. I can promise you, God, not the universe, not anything in the world is going to keep you from having some love handles, which by the way, I still can't figure out why we call them love handles. I hate them. I don't, under, I don't know. When they show up, I'm not like, oh, yay, I love myself so much. I'm like, what the hell? Where did these come from? I don't understand that. The point I'm making is that you have free will, but you have to use that will to go against your past, against your insecurities, against your fears, against your doubts, and stay in alignment with your heart, not your head. See, your head has been programmed by your past, by the people you've been surrounded by, by the experience and failures that you've had, but I believe that your heart is perfect and divine. And the only thing it really takes in life to become unstoppable is to get to the point where you align your head with your heart. How do you do that? You take time every day to remind yourself of your worth, of what you were created to do and who you were created to be. Man, if you do that every single day, you become unstoppable. The number one problem, and this is actually the word I added to the formula, Dave Ramsey's formula was consistency plus intensity plus time. I added the word worth because I've done enough small group masterminds with girls to hear over and over and over and over and over that the problem was not necessarily their action. The problem was what they believed the results of their action would be. And if they didn't have me as a coach in their life to remind them of their worth over and over and over and over, they would have gave up. They needed somebody to just affirm Firm them over and over and over that they could do this, that they did have what it takes, that what they sow is what they reap and what they seek is what they will find. And if I could just keep girls committed to the process long enough, somewhere between six and nine months, it's like their head would finally get it and my voice would become their voice. Their heart would become their new alignment and their whole world would change forever. But if you don't work on your worth, none of the other stuff will matter because you can't outwork your will. Let me say that again. You can't outwork your will.
This is my favorite analogy for how you can constantly remind yourself of what your worth is. How many of you believe that all of us were created equal regardless of gender? Show me some jazzies. Well, I mean, it's 2020. Surely you believe in gender equality by now, right? If not, we got some real problems. How many of you believe that we're all created equal regardless of ethnicity? Show me some jazzies. How about regardless of religion? Jazzies. How about regardless of sexual orientation? I mean, whether you like, agree, disagree, any of that, we're all equal. You guys agree? Now, how is it possible that we could all be created equal, everyone in the world except for you? How dare you claim to believe in equality if you don't look in the mirror and give that same equality to yourself? You can't believe in equality and count yourself out. Either all of us were born for greatness or none of us were. Either all of us can get what we want in life if we put in the time and energy and effort or none of us can. Either all of us can get over our past and create a new future or none of us can. My favorite thing, this is, this is hard for other people to understand because you haven't got to sit in my chair. But sitting in this chair, well, really, this is a new house, so not this exact chair, but, but sitting in my seat, I have got to coach six-figure earners, seven-figure earners, top 10 coaches, superstar, double superstar, triple superstar, some of the most successful people both in this company and in other companies. And I have got to listen over and over and over and over to every person, no matter how talented they are and no matter how successful they are, tell me about their insecurities and their doubts and fears enough to realize we're all just, I talk about this in my book, we're all three to six months away from either the worst version of ourselves or the best version of ourselves. Ain't nobody got their shit together and ain't nobody so special that they just woke up like this. We all worked really hard. Overcoming insecurities and doubts and fears, thinking that we didn't really fit in. Thinking that the odds were stacked against us, thinking that we were the black sheep. Every single one, I've literally never met one successful person that was like, I just woke up and I was like, I know I got this. I was literally born for this. I have the experience for it. I have the personality for it. I have the skills and the talents for it. All I got to do is wake up. I've never met that person. You have to work on your worth. And when your worth when your worth, man, when you can get your belief in your worth to align with what it actually is, you're unstoppable. Nothing in the world can stop you when you finally dig into that. And that's why we say as a life coach, my job is not to give you something because you already have everything you need. My job is just to help you become more aware of everything that's already living on the inside. You don't need nothing from me. The only thing you needed me to do was open your eyes to you so that you could see who you really are. Now I have to hit this last one real quick and that's the time principle. I know time is always the thing that I'm struggling with because I always talk forever, but time, I gotta throw this in here, okay? Too many people wanna take my formula they want to get consistent, take a couple extra scoops of Energize and bring all the energy in the world and say their affirmations for three weeks and then get pissed when it doesn't pay off. You have to give it the time it takes to get what you want. And nobody knows what that time is. And no, that's not a gimmick. And no, that's not me just trying to keep you from quitting. That is the honest to God truth. We are all on different timelines. How, why, same reason, health and fitness. 
Some of you came in with 100 pounds to lose and some of you came in with five pounds to lose. Wouldn't it be ridiculous for the girl with five pounds to lose to compare her, sorry, the girl with 100 pounds to lose to compare her journey to the girl with five pounds to lose? Now, when you came into this business, every single one of you brought different past experience. You brought different good and bad habits. Some of you, like me, brought a lot of bad habits. You brought different personality types. You brought different past achievements. You brought some of you emotional baggage. You brought all of these things. And then you want to compare your journey to someone else's and that don't even make sense. Some people came into the business with five pounds to lose. You know what? Good for them. I hate their guts because I was one of the people that had a hundred pounds to lose if we're talking about business weight because I was the worst but you have to stop looking around because can I tell you something? Someone else having success faster than you doesn't necessarily pay your bills or keep your bills from getting paid. The only thing that pays your bills and creates your future and takes care of your kids and your life and your future is your journey. So at some point you just have to say, I'm in it for as long as it takes, or as John Maxwell says, when I first started, I asked myself, how long is it going to take? But the more I went and matured, I began to ask, how far can I go? What does it matter how long it takes? You can go. You can go infinite. You can go forever. I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine, guys, for one second where your life could be 10 years from now, let's go 10 years, okay? Let's not, sometimes if it's just one year, it's really hard to imagine, but 10 years out, if you were to follow the game plan, bring your best energy and discover your self-worth on a daily basis, 10 years from now, everyone on this call could be a six-figure earner. And honestly, several of you could be seven-figure earners. Now, if I made a deal with you that you had to go back to college for four years and I'd have a six-figure job waiting for you on the other side, most people would take it in a second. You would, you would go $80,000 into debt and do homework for the next four years for the promise of a six-figure job on the other side. And I have found that in network marketing, if you do it right and actually show up and bring the right amount of consistency just about anybody can become a six-figure earner in four years without having to have debt, without paying someone $80,000 for the education. Oh, and by the way, you get paid along the way. But we don't want to do that work. We want to get rich quick. We want everything to magically change. And that's why 90% of people end up quitting because they wanted something to happen fast. But can I tell you something? By the time you go through all of the get rich quick schemes in the world, you could have already been a rich ass beach body coach. So instead of chasing all of these gimmicks around, why don't you just stick with something that you love and believe in because you get the opportunity to change lives and see where it takes you. If you'll do that, if you will do that, Every person on this call, your potential, it's, it's, it's infinite. You can accomplish anything you want. Okay? So that's all I got for you tonight other than, as Alyssa mentioned at the beginning of the call, if you live in the United States, you can go to joshcoats.com. You can get my book, F Leadership, for free when you just pay shipping. If you're outside of the United States, you can go to www.joshcoats.com slash audiobook and you can get a free download of the audiobook. If you're in the States, if you go get a paperback copy, it comes with the audiobook for free. So you'll actually get both, okay? Um, so either way, you can go get this book. I promise you I poured everything I have from five years of coaching people, of doing my own study, building my own business. It's literally five years I fit in between this. That can either make my book feel really special or make me feel not very smart for everything I've learned fitting in one book. But it's all there. I promise you it will change your life. So Alyssa, I'm all done. Hand it back to you. I know I went really long. That's my style. I, I think you already knew that though. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. Yay. So these guys are rock stars. They're all like complete ballers. Um, so I'm super, super excited for them to listen to you today and to just emphasize literally everything that we tell them all the time. Um, just really your call emphasizes what we tell them all the time to be consistent, to show yeah. the energy and to do the list. And it's like, I didn't tell you to say that, but that's basically what we tell them to do <laughs> all of the time and that it all matters and you can't yeah. show up and you can't wing it and you can't just pretend and yeah. we got to dance, right guys? So, <laughs> but yeah, so, so good. Thanks so, so, so much. We really, really appreciate it. Do you mind asking any, if we have any questions at oh, all? That's fine. That's fine. I got time. Okay. Do you guys have any questions at all for Josh? He's going to post in the chat. No. This is that awkward time when it's like we, we, we give, a, we give away free, free <laughs> coaching and no one takes advantage of it. And I'm always hoping you just got so much that you're just like soaking it in. Free coaching. So um, let me see. I'm going to ask you something. Okay. Sounds good. What would you say is the most similarity that you pull amongst the seven figure earners that you work with? Good question. Um, the thing that they all have in common, is that what you mean? Yeah. Yes. So I, I always say that at every new level that you talk to, you can, you can sense a different mindset. And, and, and by that, I just mean that they have worked long enough and hard enough on themselves that there is a different level of confidence that they show up with. They like, it's like, yes, they still have struggles. Yes, they still have doubts and insecurities like every single human does, but you can just tell there is like a different tone in their voice. Like they understand their worth. They know what they're good at. They're usually pretty honest about what they suck at, okay? But they know with 100% confidence what they bring to the table and why they're there and, and, and their own significance. And, and, and I think that that's something, Alyssa, that a lot of people are afraid of. Um, a lot of people are afraid to own what they're good at. They're afraid to own their significance. Like we've been taught, um, a lot of culture has taught us, you can't talk about yourself. You can't think too highly. You know, I grew up in a very religious world where we were told the scripture over and over and over and over not to think too highly of yourself. But that's the thing. It doesn't say not to think highly of yourself. It says not to think too highly. In other words, don't think that you're better than anyone else, but you still have to understand that you're as good as everyone else. And so sometimes we fall into this trap that I call false humility, where we try to pretend we're not as good as other people and we call it humility. And that's not humility. That's shame. When you pretend you're not as good and don't have to anything to bring to the table. That's not humility. Um, John Maxwell says it this way. I love, love, love this. He says, humility is not the, um, humility is not the absence of strength. It is just the admission of weakness. Doesn't mean you don't have strength. It means you're willing to admit. I tell people all the time, I'm like, here's the thing. The things that I do, I do better than anyone else in the world. But that's only three or four things. And everything else in life, I'm like the worst at in the world. And that's why I have four assistants. And that's why I read so much. And that's why I do so many affirmations because I'm confident in it enough to know the things I bring to the table, I'm real good at this. But I'm also humble enough to tell you anytime, anywhere, any place, I suck at a lot of stuff. Like I'm just real bad at it because that's my humanity. And that's okay. Like, like you don't have to be good at everything, but I think the seven figure earners are really smart about knowing what they are good at and being really smart about surrounding themselves with people, whether it be assistants, whether it be coaches, whatever it is they need to basically make up for their weaknesses and their shortcomings. Yeah. Awesome. That's a really, really good answer. Do you guys have any other questions for him? No, their minds are blown. They're like, oh, 
Now what do I do with my life? I hope so. I'm always like, <laughs> I, I hope, I hope this is them processing everything and not being like, get this guy out of here already. I'm, I'm just staying here to be kind. No, no. It's just, it's very reinforcing of everything that we teach, you know, get in and do your crap and do your yeah. list and follow the script and just freaking do it. And yeah. you know, like we've got just, like I said, the girls on this call, I mean, they're, they're here, right? The CEOs are the bosses of their business and they're amazing. So it's just like, it's, it's in synchronicity, really like in tune and you didn't even yeah. know it. <laughs> well, keep listening to Alyssa guys. Cause she knows what she's talking about. And the, the crazy thing is we're all saying the same thing. Like nobody's, nobody's teaching anything crazy out there, new. There might be a couple different angles. You know what I'm saying? Like, like people might approach things like a little bit differently, but in general, we're all following the same formula. Like, so listen to Alyssa, trust her. There's going to be times where you're going to feel like, uh, she just telling me that because she wants me to work, blah, 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 blah. No, she's trying to help you. Okay. She's trying to help you and you keep thinking she's got something she's not telling us. No, she doesn't. She just been doing it long enough and consistent enough that the compound effect is working for her in a way it hasn't caught up for you yet. And, and you know, that's the thing is we see successful people. We think they've got some secrets they're not sharing with us. And the only secret is that the compound effect really freaking works and you haven't been doing it long enough to see that snowball effect. So like you're seeing these little, little growths, right? Whereas Alyssa has been doing that long enough that she's seeing these kind of growths. And when you compare hers to yours, it makes it seem like, man, she's got something she does. No, it's just that she's been doing it longer. So she's got momentum rolling on top of momentum, rolling on top of momentum, rolling on top of momentum. And that's what it looks like. And that should be, gosh, that should be so exciting for you to say, I'm going to get to that one day where I make it look easy. Yeah, I tell them, it's like the wheel of fortune. You got to show up and hit the wheel. And if you don't hit the wheel every day, your freaking wheel's going to stop. And then yep. you're going to have to go and like tug the damn thing down again. Yep. And it's going to take so much energy to get the wheel going. So yes. just hit the wheel. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and w which is really, it's just like health and fitness. It really is. It's just like health and fitness. If you want to have lifelong health, it's not that you have to go to the gym six hours a day. It's that you have to stick to the game plan every day, you know? And if you do that, well, one of these days you'll have Melissa McAllister abs, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still waiting for that to catch up with me, but, but <laughs> Melissa McAllister is the equivalent of a lifelong of health and fitness. And we're all over here going, man, I'm younger than her and I can't have, I, I can't have a body like her. Well, that's because we haven't been doing it as long as her. Like Melissa is like, girl's phenomenal, but it didn't happen overnight. Like that is literally a lifelong work in process. And I can always make a joke about Melissa McAllister abs because we all know that she has like the most incredible, she has my biceps for like at, her and Sean T, right? Like Sean T, oh, geez, Sean T with those abs, my God. He, he has, he has like my quads for abs. Like can't yeah. even get over that dude's abs. Like the big, like bar handle. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> like circular. I'm like, what? How does, how does that happen? I don't even understand where those come from. It's not fair, but, but, but I also haven't been teaching cardio classes for 30 years like Sean T. So again, I haven't done what he's been willing to do. Someone have to have a, one more question that came yeah. in. Um, best advice for someone who continues to use their full-time corporate job as a crutch to not succeed in this business. I have such a good one for you. I have such a good one for you. Okay. This is a challenge that I've started giving some of my push elite girls this year that had a similar situation where they're like, they just don't have the urgency like some people do. So I said, so I gave them this assignment. I want you to pick some of the luxuries that you're able to enjoy in life that you really don't want to do without maybe your cell phone um maybe your internet maybe um maybe your car payment okay and i want you to stop paying those bills with your day job and i want you to commit to paying those bills with your beach body income 
or you don't pay them. Because at some point you have to create some type of like, I don't want to use the word fear, but yeah, you got to create some type of a fear of like, if this doesn't pay off, like I have to earn these things. And the problem is if your day job will keep paying for it forever, guess what you're going to be stuck doing? Using your day job forever. So if you want to create the same type of urgency that I had when I was 30, you're going to have to make some shifts and stop letting yourself be spoiled by your day job and say, okay, I'm going to have to step up, use my beach body money to actually do some stuff or I'm going to suffer. And if you pick the right things, we all have two or three things in life that we just will not do without no matter what. Like if you told me I had to make 10 extra sales this month, or lose my, my cell phone service, I would find a way to make 10 sales this month, right? So you just have to put yourself in that kind of a position. Yeah, that's good. She said, oh boy, I love that. 16 years of corporate America is killing me. And then Kristen too, she just went two stars. Same thing with your sister. Thanks so much for that tip. That's a really good one. Of course, of course, yes. Love that. All right. Well, you guys, thanks so much, Josh, for your time and for your energy Welcome. and for your knowledge and just pouring into this fabulous group of women tonight. And I thank you guys all for your time and for hopping on with Josh and for listening to him because he's brilliant. So we're super, super happy that you are here. And um, yeah, I hope you guys all have an amazing evening and I'll catch you guys next week. Thanks so much again, Josh. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. Night. Night, everybody.